Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Theorist, here with your host, JC Botero 67 I know it's been like, what, two weeks? So I really missed you guys, and I've missed doing these reviews, so it's, it's good to be back. I know I did promise a twofer, but what I'm going to do instead is release this review on Tuesday. Uh, this is for uh, Chapter 290 of Season 2 of Tower of God. And then I will focus on 291 in its own review, and I'm hoping to release that Thursday. Uh, maybe Friday. We'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and dive right into it. So, BB2 is dead. Uh, it's basically the clone of BB2, though, if you think about it. Uh, so anyway... Kisea is asking Veal, oh, like, what should we do now? Because they're just kind of standing over this dead dude and, you know, kind of debating where to go next. So they're almost like Sims. You kind of have to guide them in a direction. So there is someone who takes the initiative. It is a pink-haired sworn enemy. Uh, we're not sure who he is yet. And I do forget whose sworn enemy he is. But anyway, we will find out when they have their confrontation, right? I mean, it's not happening this chapter. Spoilers. But... Uh, you know, hopefully soon we will see this epic showdown between sworn enemies. And while I'm at that point, yes, this pink-haired sworn enemy, <laughs> such a tongue twister, uh, he steps in and says, hey, let's go find our sworn enemies. So that's why I'm saying, you know, it's going to be a very interesting showdown, especially because uh, Bomb is in the midst of training, and uh, later on we see that Kuhn and Rock get a little bit of training in as well. So, you know, it's going to be interesting how they face off with their sworn enemies, especially when this training that Bomb is undergoing is to be able to stand up to Zahard. Uh, so, you know, I guess it'll be extra practice by uh, fighting it out with Viol. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but then again, Viol didn't really seem interested in fighting, so... We'll see what happens with that, honestly. I know SIU has a plan, so we just gotta, you know, wait for it. <laughs> All right, so anyway, we then go to Edwan and Baum. And so Edwan is basically having Baum try and figure out what shape and qualities of Shinzu suit him. So basically his Shinzu will take on the shape, and that'll be uh, most effective for when he does his attacks and whatnot. Uh, so Baum is actually having a hard time thinking about it, trying to figure it out. So Edwan's like, oh, hey, I have something that can help you. So he tosses him this object that is called a clicker. And so I'm going to read a portion of the chapter right now. So Baum receives the item and he's like, what's this? And Kun Edwan responds, it's called Shinzu Reactant, but we used to just call it a clicker. It's an item that Gustang made for us. When you hold the clicker in your hand and press it, the liquid reacts to your qualities and attributes and shows you the shape of Shinzu that suits them. Of course, all it does is show you. It doesn't mean that that Shinzu is yours, but it's much quicker if you see an image. Give it a try. It will help you a lot. Okay, says Bomb. So I'm going to stop there. And it, this cracks me up because when I first read about that, I was like, okay, so are you trying to tell me that Bomb is getting a patroness, right? It kind of has that, like, similar-sounding concept to it. Uh, so, yes, I am really curious to see what shape it takes on. Obviously, it's not going to be an animal shape, but one can only dream. So, anyway, <laughs> before Baum tries this out, he does ask Kun Adwan if his other companions can get these lessons as well, to which Kun Adwan responds like, eh, like, I don't care, that's cool, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, basically. So he's not opposed to it, but yeah. And so speaking of companions, uh, we actually do go to Kuhn, Rock, and Coffee Addict. And Coffee Addict is explaining the mirror to them. Basically, the power that it has is that it can delete data humans if they just look at themselves through this mirror. So while I was typing up these notes and, you know, going through them again, uh, a thought hit me and I was like, okay, so we have Marco Asensio and Moss Jenny and also uh, Icardi Kuhn uh, going after this mirror. But they are data humans. So if they look in the mirror, that would be bad because then they would just get deleted, right? 
So I'm trying to think of like, okay, they have to have like some freaking cloth, <laughs> approach the mirror, just kind of look away, throw the cloth over the mirror, <laughs> unless the mirror is already covered up. So I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll see about that. But yeah, it was just something that hit me. I'm like, well, you know, they're retrieving this mirror, but this mirror could also hurt them in turn. So they've got to be really cautious about that. But anyway, back to Coffee Addict's explanation. He's also telling Kuhn and Rock that Edwan plans to use that mirror to buy time when Bomb is facing off with Zahard. So my thought is obviously Edwan is going to kind of threaten Zahard with the mirror. So it could be covered up and, you know, in, in view of Zahard. So then if he lifts the cloth or whatever covering up the mirror, I don't know why I'm insisting that this mirror is covered up, but that, that's just my thought, I guess. It would make sense. <laughs> Because they don't want to kill off Zahard either. That's the thing, too. So, anyway. <laughs> Coffee Addict tells Kuhn not to tell Bomb about this. Because they are both aware that, you know, Bomb is going to want to, like, drop his training. Or, you know, I, I don't know. But <laughs> Bomb is going to want to go help that group retrieve the mirror because it is important. So, they want to keep it on the down low so that Bomb can just solely focus on his training, which makes sense. And of course, this whole conversation is being listened in on by Icarus. Uh, you know, and then she's thinking, oh, like, I can meet Zahard. So I don't know yet what her intentions are with Zahard, but I guess we'll find out in due time. So we just got, like, a little brief snippet of Icarus. But then we go back to Kuhn, and it's really funny because Kuhn was actually thinking about Icarus. You know, thinking that, okay, Zahard said that she would get transferred to where they were too, but they haven't seen any sight of her yet. Uh, but in the meantime, Kuhn is thinking, oh, you know, she could be very useful right now. And then at that same time that he's thinking that is when he gets a call from Baum. And Baum is requesting that Kuhn and Rock meet him outside. So each of them is going to try out this clicker object that I was telling you guys about earlier. So Bomb, of course, goes first, and his shape is an orb, which, uh, you know, kind of astounds Kun Edwan for whatever reason. So I don't know the symbolism uh, to that shape yet. We don't find out this chapter either, so maybe uh, next chapter. Uh, I mean, you guys probably already know what's going on in chapter 291. I don't yet because I haven't read it yet, but yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, moving on, though, Rock gets a stone shield shape, which is very interesting. And then that made me think of that warrior that looks like rock that's in that like a um, painting carving thing that we saw like a few chapters back. So that made me think of that. And I was like, oh, okay, I could, I could see him getting that. And then Kuhn gets an ice spear, which ice spear would be more related to a spear bearer. So Kuhn has the capabilities of being a spear bearer. His father is obviously a spear bearer, but at the same time, Kuhn got chosen or maybe he chose to be a light bearer so it's interesting that he has both the capabilities but Kuhn just kind of backs out from that so to backtrack here there's an interaction between Kuhn and or let's say Aguro okay just to not confuse the Kuhns here there's an interaction between Aguro and Edwan. So Edwan's like, oh, okay, spear bearer, like, why aren't you doing that? And so Aguro simply explains, well, uh, friggin', we already have a spear bearer, which is rock. So what's the point of throwing the numbers off balance? And so this leads to this next part that I'm going to read to you guys. So starting off with Aguro, he says, well, then I'm out of here, bomb. Don't push yourself too hard. Bomb says, Kuhn, just a bit more. And then Kuhn's like, sorry, Bomb. Pointless struggling doesn't suit me. But that's Bomb again. <laughs> and then Edwan is the one who says, hey, you crooked punk. To which Kuhn looks back at him. And then uh, Edwan continues, I don't know what happened between you and me on the outside. And to be honest, I don't really care. But I don't think you'll be able to beat me if you keep running away like this. Wouldn't it benefit you more to learn from me here and get stronger? To which Kun Agaro says, get stronger? What? Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> what good would it do to get stronger? I bet if you see yourself on the outside, you'll probably want to run away. 
I don't know what happened since the train while you were climbing the tower, but my father on the outside is completely different from you. So don't kid yourself. And Bomb's just like, Coon! <laughs> I wish I had Joe here with me. <laughs> he would do a much better Bomb voice than I can. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, Bomb says, Still, we should get stronger together. Getting stronger isn't only necessary, necessary for beating great fighters. We've still got a long way to go before we can set lofty goals like that. Let's take it slow together. You should at least get even a bit strong for the sake of that. To go together, couldn't you do it for that reason? Bomb. <sighs> he sighs. <laughs> of course, this is Aguro. And he's like thinking to himself, there's no arguing with him. All right, let's do it. So I really like that interaction between Bomb and Kuhn as well. Just because Kuhn will do anything for Bomb. It's just the sweetest, cutest thing ever. <laughs> Maybe I secretly ship them. I don't know. But, <laughs> but their friendship, their friendship is just beautiful. I love it. All right. So two days have now passed. And Bomb has actually managed to form a Shinzu into an orb shape. To which Kuhn is thinking... I thought we were going to take the slow, because Kuhn hasn't been able to figure that out yet. Uh, I'm assuming Rock hasn't either, uh, but Bomb's like super excited, it's really cute. And then, another four days pass, and now we are with Moss, Chinny, and Ko. So, they've reached the final stage, the seed at the center of the mirror. I know, it's a mouthful. And honestly, it reminded me of those darn <laughs> Planet of the Ape titles. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, titles like Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and these other ones. And I'm just like, y'all, like, each movie that you bring out is just gonna have, like, a longer title each time. And I'm just worried about what this next title will be. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Zahard is already there, of course. Uh, we saw that the previous chapter, so uh, chapter 289, I believe. And basically, he's telling them that this is a restricted area and that they are to turn back. So then Marco is trying to get Mostini's attention because, you know, she's kind of the leader here, the oldest one, I'm assuming. Uh, so, you know, he obviously is like, hey, like, what do we do? And, you know, this has got to be uh, Zahard's data. Like, seriously, what are we going to do? But much like Androsi, uh, Moshini is just frozen in place after seeing Zahard. So it really has me curious because so far, the only people who have stayed frozen in place after meeting Zahard are both Zahard's princesses. So, you know, what kind of power does young Zahard, like the data of young Zahard, have over these girls? Uh, granted, Moshini is data, but Androsi isn't. So, you know, it just makes you wonder things. Uh, what I was also thinking about, because I haven't seen my girl for a bit of time, uh, you know, I'm hoping she's recuperated, I'm hoping she's okay, uh, and then hopefully she's no longer in Coon's lighthouse, like, hopefully she's, like, in her own room at the lodging, on a nice comfy bed, you know, getting her rest, getting better, that is all I ask. <laughs> so, I don't know if she's shown up in 291 yet, but I guess I'll find out when I do read it. Uh, so anyway, skipping past that, and, and if you guys have any input, if you guys, you know, also share the same sentiments as me, like, oh, okay, like, what is this whole thing about the princesses suddenly, like, just freezing up when they see Zahard? Uh, so I'd like, I'd like to hear that, uh, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on that. <laughs> All right. So, Mashini's, like, not moving, like I said, and Marco Asensio ha actually has to grab a hold of her, much like, uh, Baum had to do with Androsi. Uh, in a few chapters back. And uh, basically he does this because Zahard throws an attack their way. At first it seems like he's attacking them, but it's really only to ruin the path that the group has to take in order to get past Zahard to get to their objective, which is the mirror. So if anything, Zahard's attack is more of a warning attack. You know, kind of warning them to like back off. So speaking of that, I do want to read the last little bit here of the chapter. Uh, this is all Zahar that I'm going to read right now. Don't proceed any further past here. I won't kill your warriors right away because I've made a promise to Edwan, but if you try to go any further, I'll consider it a violation of the promise and kill you all right here. So yeah, chapter is left in suspense. Obviously, I do not believe this group is going to give up on acquiring that mirror, 
but you know their lives would be threatened and Zahart is pretty freaking powerful so you know we'll we'll see how this group manages to handle Zahard. Uh, and again, I haven't read 291 yet, but, you know, I don't know if something's happened there already. But I guess we'll see later in the week. So that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in, as usual, and I will catch you guys later this week. Peace.